Good evening, everybody. It's a privilege and an honor to be here. It's uh, an honor to see the work that's being built here through, the, through your pastors. It's inspiring for us. I'm taking notes from my own church. So we are being blessed to be here. And even more inspired to work closely together in partnership with you here in Cambodia from the Netherlands. Netherlands. And you have great pastors. They lied a bit. They said, I'm very encouraging. <laughs> but I have been teasing all the days behind here. <laughs> but I left them. I left them. And they are really encouraging. So, Today, love your enemies. And we just pray peace over Ukraine that's facing a serious enemy. But today, we will focus on our enemies, your enemies. And we have a big friend in heaven, Jesus. And he has already crushed his enemy, Satan. And that's why we have hope and that's why we have a future. And uh, so why did Jesus say, love your enemies? That's nearly impossible. He does not say to bless your enemy, but to bless you. He does not say that to bless your enemies, but to bless you. Because if we are hurted, if we are hurted, hurted. Oh. If somebody does a pain, and we don't deal with it, then over time it will transform in a lifelong emotional suffering. Affecting your mental health. But finally also your whole body. Your precious other relationships. And sometimes it costs you even your job, so it costs you money. And Jesus died for you and he rose from the dead so that you could be prosperous. You are not called to suffer. So who's your enemy? I would say anyone who hurts you, that does you pain. An emotional pain is inevitable in life. You will always meet some people that hurt you. At work, at home, in your family, maybe even your mother or your father. If you're married, your wife or your husband, anyone will one day hurt you that you are close to. Do 
That's why we need to know how to deal with it. Actually, the people that are the most close to us can hurt us the most. There's a Bible verse in Proverbs 12, verse 18. It says this, Careless words step like a sword, but wise words bring healing. In the Dutch translation, it does not say sword, but a knife. So for a knife, I need to be very close to step it in his bed. Or over here. <laughs> and if you step you in, if they step you over here, <laughs> you will slowly, painfully die. So only people close to us can hurt us the most. Enemies far away. They might hurt a little. But people close to you, they can hurt you the most. That's why we know, or need to know, how to deal with it. Otherwise, emotional pain will grow in a long time emotional suffering. Years ago, I was fired by my boss for, a non, for nonsense. It, it hurt me a lot. I knew him quite well. But a few, few years later, I had a new boss. And I wrote him a plan and I sent it through the email. And he wrote one sentence back. If you do this, you dig your own grave. I had still lenses of a boss firing me. So I read in this email, I'm going to fire you. So the past can come in your present and paralyze you. So I didn't know what to do. So I asked my friends around me. This is what my boss says. He will fire me. And I said, no, Peter. He just means your plan is not working. Talk to your boss. So carefully I went to my boss. See, I have a story in the head of my bag. But then you need to check the facts. So I said to him, what did you mean with the email? Are you going to fire me? And he says, of course not. I like you. I just meant your plans are going to fail if you execute them in this way. So if we don't resolve the pain from the past, if you don't resolve the pain, if you don't oh. resolve the pain from the past, then it will paralyze us in the future. 
นูวีนึงทั่วเอายืงคลายทั่วไออนาคตระบายยืงตลอดที่สปึกสปุ่นเติมมุกอรุ่ย And your emotional pain can grow into an emotional suffering. h a t a f e c t i n g all your relationships. a s I said earlier, it is inevitable that someone will hurt you. d i n a t e t h a t t t e t a n t h e n a t That is what Jesus said in Luke 17, verse 1 t o 4. You can read it. s e a u r e u a n t t a n p s t h a m n m u l h a i r n d t i n t a n d a l o m n u p r t p a p t i n a n o m o p r t p a p n n u t r v t n h o u n e n r o k n t r p r j t l n p r s n b b o o n a t o o ข้อจำปูเนี่ยโจสได้ประดายกอดพองตายบากกอดกายปลายเจ็ดกลุ่มนิดโจอัดตัวอ้อยกอดตื่นประสนบากกอดเฟื่อไว้ข้อจำปูเนี่ยปรำปีดองขนมมวยไงหายกอดตลอดโมกโรคเนี่ยปรำปีดองโปลดอยโปลทางชิมสไดได้บานเฟื่อข้อโจอัดตัวอ้อยกอดตื่น Can I see the English version because we don't heard it in English now eh สมมติพิจารณาเลยมาดอง So okay perfect then he said to his disciples it's impossible That no offense will come; it will happen one day, if it not yet has happened in life. But you have already some age, so it happened already to you. จังในขนมแปรของปีนี้พระองค์มันมีมันตัวอย่างเช่นบาทามันอายแต่รู้ดูแต่กูยังกิจอัดพอดมันมันท่ายังเนื้อกระไรนาปลายยังนึงกิจมันพอดนุ่งลอยนึงมิ้นไอ้นาเนี่ยทั่วยังชื่อจับ And then Jesus says, "Take heed of yourselves at the moment somebody hurts you." แต่พระองค์มีมันตูท่าโจอันเนี้ยพระองค์ประหยัดในเปิดในนามมันเนี้ยทั่วยังชื่อจับ because you have the opportunity to judge ปีพรุ่งในเปิดในยังตัวตัวบานการชื่อจับปีในนามมันเนี้ยในเปิดนู้นไปทั่วยังมีออกจับได้มีออกกล้าของการเก่าโตเก๋ and at the moment you judge ในเปิดยังจับได้เก่าโตเก๋ you have taken offense ในเปิดนู้นยังจับได้ it's so fast ยังนึงตัวตัวยังจับได้เมียนอารมณ์ท่า So if somebody, if I hurt him, he can say sorry, Peter. This hurt it. You can say sorry, Peter. This hurt it. Yes, I did have some of Peter. We had worked some chicham that day. So he did not take offense. Then the pay that young, young child top by young young admin the two wrong guy chicham day. But if he would say, "That was some Jane Jevin. You are an asshole." Oh, yeah. Then he judged me. He did not take heat. He took offense on me. So Jesus said, "Don't take offense. Take care. It's so easy to take offense. It's the first thing you want to do." I'm sorry. Don't take offense. It's the first thing you want to do. Kati mui da yeng trai phu som kom ao yeng ngi ta tu rong offense. Ao ngi ao kom ngi on chet la som tu. So then in verse three from Luke seventeen, he says, "Take heed to yourself. If your brother, this brother, sins against you, rebuke him." Jeng pa ao mi mentu tha ba san chi bong pa onat phu yeng chui chap som prien pa dai ku ke. Even seven times a day. Hey, ao yeng ot tu ao ke. Ma ngai tu bay pam pa dong ka doi. So what is rebuking? Ta ka dat day ban tu nang mi nei tham ai pat prien pa dai. Rebuking is not speaking harsh words. Ka dai prien day pa dai nang ku min mi nei tha yeng ot jai pi thun thun te. Rebuking is keeping it to yourself and saying, "Like, ow, this hurted me." God, I just print a diary. Don't be like that. Just just make a comment. Oh, we should chat. We should just chat. Rebuking is speaking with respect. God, I just print a diary. Print a diary. Print a diary. Like that. This is God. I just need to do a group. And with honor. Just move in God. I don't get to do a group. But that is difficult. If I hurt him, but I can't be a true lady. But bad, the poor, the people that work some chew chap. To be respectful, from God, I just bang high, God, rub the wing. Not one time, but many, but all. One, 
3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7. And stay respectful. That is difficult. And then he said, You need to forgive him. I had a good friends in church. Was a leader to me. A granddad to our children. We were very close. And he stepped me in the back one day. He stepped me in the back with a knife, bang. Not, not really, but with words, you know. And I'm a leader. I have learned you need to forgive within three seconds. Because if you don't do that, you live in the past. Three seconds is the past. If you don't forgive, you live in the past. Three. So I forgave immediately. But I always thought, I have forgiven you. But if you one day meet, and we talk, I still want you to know how much you hurted me. So I still was expecting something from him. So I found out I did not forgive. I forgave. But if I have the chance, I will tell you how you hurted me. And then I decided, I've forgiven you. No strings attached. Seven times in one day. No one can do that. And Jesus says in Luke 17, verse 5 to 6, and maybe you can read that in, in, in Kamai. ពួកសវៈទូព្រះអម្ចាស់ថាសូមព្រះអង្គប្រទានជំនឿមកយើងខ្ញុំថែមទៀតព្រះអម្ចាស់មានមន្ទូរឆ្លើយថាប្រសិ
It will go down. 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 down, 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 down. And not your enemy will die. But you will die. But the person that needs seven times forgiving on one day has deep roots. And because hurting people, people that are hurted, will always hurt other people. If someone hurts you seven times a day, don't judge. Have pity. Because you don't have a problem. But the, your enemy has a problem. So, then Jesus says, if you have only a mustard seed. Of faith. You will move the mulberry tree. So what is it? Not what you feel. Not what you think. When you are heard it. But you listen to the wise words of Jesus. Forgive the enemy. Otherwise you will have a problem. So I have quickly three short points to do this. First of all, plant your life along a stream. Jesus said you will know the tree by the fruit. Fruit bed, tree bed. So don't try to change the fruit in your life. Don't try to change bitterness and forgiveness in your heart. You will have a work your whole life. But Plant your tree like someone says, I am like a tree. I am planted alongside a water stream. And trees planted along a water stream. They will always be green. And they will always have nice fruits. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Read the word every day. And the word will produce love, peace, and joy. So if someone hurts you, you will automatically respond from love. And the, and the second point is this. Revenge is deceptive. Jesus said, be on your guard when someone hurts you. Don't fall under the trap of taking revenge. You are the cold fish. Cold fish? The cold fish. Oh, Thinking you are a shark. And taking revenge. But what you don't see is that the big cold fish that you see is actually a shark and he will eat you alive. <laughs> you will die. Like Jesus said, you will have deep, deep roots if you take revenge. 
making your enemy suffer has nobody made happy making your enemy suffer has made no one happy and hurting the other person will never ease your own pain. Hurting the other person will never ease your own pain. Let's read Romans 12, verse 19 to 21. Romans 12. 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 ទូយទៅវិញប្រសិនបើខ្មាំងស្ត្រីរបស់អ្នកគ្លៀនចូលយកមហោបអាហារឲ្យគេបរិភពទៅប្រសិនបើគេស្រេចចូលឲ្យទ
everybody. He judged God. He judged the slang. He judged his, he judged his wife. He judged everybody. And he lost everything. So how did Jesus deal with his enemy? When he was on the cross, he prayed for people. He blessed people. And what did Jesus do after he died because he was hurted? He rose up from the dead. And went to heaven. And is reigning now. If we pray for our enemies. And we bless them. They can hurt us. But Jesus will rise you up. And he will make you free. Free from bitterness. Free from anger and free from being an unforgiving person. So let's take a moment and stand on our feet. I just close our eyes. I just know if there is someone you're angry at you're still bitter or you have maybe forgiven or not yet maybe you have forgiven but there are some strings attached then you are in the trap of Satan then he has a hold on you. And Jesus wants you to be free tonight. He knows that Satan will strangle everything in you. Jesus wants to prosper you. So decide to be free tonight. And say for yourself just the following, if that is you. And just say, I repent. Just that your own ears can hear it, I repent. From bitterness. From being angry. And being unforgiving. I re-announce and take back all the rights that I gave to Satan to work in me. And I bless my enemy. Call your enemy by name and say, I bless you. I pray a blessing over you. And now, just say this. I am free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.